Okay, this week is Pasha's Pinchas. We all know the story that there was an event of unusual defiance. That's, I guess, the way we do word it. That was orchestrated by Billam. This guy, Billam, lost his pants. Finished. He failed terribly, miserably at cursing the Jews. So before he leaves, he tells Bullock two things. First, let me give you advice. And then let me give you some good news and bad news. The good news and the bad news that he gives him is the Jews are once going to conquer Moiv. But it's not going to happen soon. It's going to take a long time. That the whole last prophecy, which is really where Bilam speaks about Mashiach and about David Amelech, is saying, Oh, yeah, the Jews are going to rule the world. But don't worry, it's not happening soon. So enjoy your moment in the sun. It's not going to happen in your lifetime or in your children's lifetime or in your grandchildren's lifetime. And in terms of the advice, he says, Hashem hates immorality, perverseness. So get them to sin. Moreover, if you get them to sin, you get them also to worship idols. So the Benoist Midian and the Benoist Moyev, including princesses, started to get Yidin to do Aver Zachman Litzlan. Depending on which Mepharshim you read, it seems like they, they zeroed in and shaved Shimon and they scored a home run. They were very successful. And here you had a situation of Jewish people openly behaving in a really, really, really disgusting way, worshipping idols. And uh, Moshe is trying to do something about it. Moshe says to the leadership, get yourself together, catch these guys, and kill them. And instead of the people involved's reaction being, oh boy, let's stop this, let's end this immorality, let's, let's you know, let's regain our, our equilibrium, they, they react with even more defiance. They're going to they're gonna shove the disrespect, they're going to shove them around in Moshe Rabbeinu's face, and he's going to take it. And they go to Zimri, who is one of the leaders of Shevet Shimon, they say, look, your brothers are being slaughtered, they're standing on the side. So Zimri approaches Moshe Rabbeinu with a Midianus, with a shiksa. And he says to him, Zu, Muteresli Ayasura, she's permitted for me or prohibited to me. <coughs> so Moshe says, Asura? He says, Really? So who permitted you to marry a Midianite? In other words, the chutzpah, you're talking about Moshe Ben when it's 40th year. The chutzpah, the arrogance there, it wasn't only that they were having, it was, it was an event of remarkable disrespect and lawlessness. It was just a breakdown of everything that Jewish civilization stood for. The disrespect, the, to, to, to speak to Moshe that way to his face. And the it was just, Moshe was at a loss. And this immorality is all around them. The Sanhedrin are trying to kill people and the people are just doing their thing. Pinchas decides, time to act. He runs over to Meshach Rabbeinu and he says, I know that if a person, a Jew, lives with a shiksa, there's no uh, death sentence in a bezin. But there's a lochel, Meshach Mishine, Kanayim Pagan, that zealots can kill him. And as the Mepharshim say, that even though it's it's not a sin, but it's worse than a sin because the Jews are fundamentally separated from the nations. And when this separation is breached, it's a, it's a sign in a way of viewing yourself as not part of this group. So Moshe says to him, you're right, but since you remembered, you go and do it. So he picks up a spear and he puts it through the two of them, him and her. And the Gemara says a whole bunch of miracles that occurred that day in the Tagim Yenus of the end of the Pachas. Balak enumerates the ten miracles that occurred. The bottom line is that this was, from Pinchas' perspective, an act of suicide. I don't think for one moment Pinchas thought he would survive it. You need to understand the chaos. You need to understand the lawlessness. You need to understand the, the degree of disrespect that had taken over the Jewish world at that particular moment. And Pinchas goes straight into the heart of it and he rips the heart out. Here you have thousands of people who are just, you know, just imagine a bunch of people who never drank alcohol in their life, 
but all at once just just you just you got a control the the scene was so hysterically um beyond control beyond belief beyond imagination it was just absolute chaos on a mass scale talking about tens of thousands of people tens of thousands of people Pinnacles goes straight to the heart and he kills the lynchman he kills the keystone he cuts him down and nothing happens to Pinchas that was the greatest miracle of all and he absolutely breaks the back this one act just interrupts this 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 uh, this lawlessness this, immor- this absolute breakdown of it he kills it he, just, he breaks it the plague stops the morality stops it's like a wake up call it's like somebody went over to each one of these Shemanites and slapped them across the face it stops people stop dying people stop sinning and there's law one act strategically placed this is what Pinchas does when you read the Pshutah Mikra, you need to bear in mind that, again, I, it seems very reasonable to assume that Pinchas went on a suicide mission. He killed Zimri with no intention of surviving. He killed Zimri hoping to somehow rein in this absolute chaos that had taken over the Jewish world. And Achman Lathana could have brought about a collapse of the whole nation. And he succeeds. And he survives. That was Moshe's direction to do so? No. Moshe was at a loss. They're standing and crying. And Pinchas runs over to Moshe Rabbeinu and says, there's instructions. There's a way to react in this situation that you taught us. Moshe says, you're right, I forgot. But you know what? You go ahead and carry it out. So he does. By himself. Doesn't get together an army. Doesn't get together a posse, a, a group, a, a following. He, again, it seems totally reasonable to assert that Pinchas did not expect to survive. He just hoped to somehow do something to this to this to this madness. I mean, halakhically, you see a person living with a shiksa, you have to kill him in the act. It's the din. This is the halakh. But this, and he was successful. So our pasha begins with Vayedabar Avayel, Moshe, God Almighty speaks to Moshe Rabbeinu. Laimer. The word Laimer here is a little bit strange because Laimer normally means to repeat. To whom is Moshe Rabbeinu going to repeat this? Because if you look in Pasuk Yud which is on page 3 of your paragraph, you have again therefore speak to the Jewish people and tell them so this Leimed is going arguably only on Pasuk Yer Aleph Hashem is telling something to Meshach Rabbeinu which is for Meshach Rabbeinu's own ears it's not meant for public consumption so the word Leimed is already a curiosity Hashem says to Meshach Rabbeinu Leimed well, let's say just give it the conventional translation Leimed means he should repeat and he tells him as follows Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aaron Akein. Pinchas the son of Elazar, the son of Aaron, the priest. Heishiv has brought back, has settled, as Hamasi my anger. Me'al ben Yisrael from the Jewish people. Bekanoi es kinasi b'saycham, because he he was jealous on behalf of my jealousy in the Jewish people. In other words, he did what I would have done. But Kanye especially means had he not demonstrated this kin and this jealousy, I would have had to do it. And because he did it on my behalf, therefore the benefit was that Velayichilisi as Bnei Yisrael, I did not wipe out the Jewish nation but cannot see in my own jealousy. Indicating that had Pirchas not done it and Hashem would have done it, the outcome would have been much more severe. This is what the Pasik says. And as is our tradition, we read the different Mafash. We're really going to focus on the words Bakani Eskinosi. That he was jealous for me. He, he, he was zealous on the behalf of my jealousy. He jealous instead of me, if you will. But let's read both Rashi's, although our priority is the second Rashi. Pinchas ben Allah ibn Akayin, Pinchas the son of Allah, the son of Adam the priest, says Rashi, the fish are Yeshvatim of Azim Isa. The tribes kept on shaming Pinchas. Harisam, did you see? Ben Putti Zeh, the son of this Putti. Putti means someone who stuffs. His grandfather, his mother's father, was stuffing animals for idolatry. And he murdered a prince of the tribes of Israel. Therefore the Torah comes along and corrects it by saying, 
And it says that the genealogy of Pinchas is traceable not to Yisrael, who was his, great, his maternal grandfather. Elazar ben Aaron Akoyin was married to Yisrael's daughter, Bnei Sputil. Uh, but after Aaron. Okay, so this is what the first Ashi says. The Jewish people were making fun of him. Here he is, a lowly creation with poor Yichas. He is very, very... Uh, questionable roots himself, and he kills the leader of the Jewish people. And she says, no, 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 he has no questionable roots. He's the son of Adon Akoyin. Now on the back of the stack, I printed the Rebbe Sikha. On the back of the stack, I printed the Rebbe Sikha. The Rebbe has numerous questions. Okay, but if I can bother you to turn to page 24, let's at least taste the Rebbe Sicha. That's not, we're not going to know the whole Sicha. The Sicha is rather involved. And God, this week is quite a, a, a beautiful Hasidic Shashtikela. But page 24, at the right side of the page. The page is a real number. Yeah? On the right side of the page, by the base. The Rebbe has tons of questions. And the Rebbe says like this, Is there beer in them? As the mitvas di shvatim haben bevazig even pinchas. When the Jewish people shamed Pinchas, their intent was to einstellen sich, to stand up, for the honor of all the Jewish people, and for the honor of Meish Rabbeinu. When you read Rashi, you get the impression that they were the, the people of Shimon, who were themselves involved in this filth, this immorality, and they were displeased by Allah, by Pinchas, who interrupted it all and killed one of their leaders. So they say, hey, who do you think you are? You yourself are a low life, Ben low life, Ben Benisha low life. How do you come to kill an Asli be Yisrael? Says the Rebbe, no, that's not what the story was. They got pious on Pinchas. Listen to this. Zimri brought this Midyonis, this Shiksa, to the eyes of Meisha Rabbeinu, the Eni Kala Das Bnei Yisrael, to the eyes of the Jewish people. Uvitzvishin Ali Yidin, and amongst all the Jews, is Blaiz Pinchas given that ain't sicker. Pinchas was the only one was that Mechanic of Kinnas who was jealous on behalf of the Eibishter. Right? Skip the bracket. He says, Do hazilzul gadol b'chveidah she Yisrael. What a dishonor to the Jewish people. O b'chveidah shal Maisha, and the honor of Maisha Rabbein. Heh! Maisha is quiet. What are you picking up spears for? The Jewish leadership are quiet. Where'd you get so holy? If they don't think this offense is warrants, the reaction that you gave it, who are you to react? And Pinchas didn't ask no questions, didn't create any movement. He acted as a, as a, as a vigilante, as a sole operator. When Das is given the Siba, was the Shvatim of Bavasa given Pinchas, this was the reason that the Jewish tribes embarrassed Pinchas. And Gitainet, Adas Faserat, Gehaget Zimri. His killing Zimri is as by Im Gekum and Nit Eis Schlislach, Mach Maskinas Hashem. He didn't do it because he was trying to take on God's cause. Not in them is given oichareingemish episan that there was another motivation for why he did it. Okay, avi imi at mafatig given a gol navay dezar. His grandfather was fattening animals for idol worship. When azan hoga and the fact was that people who do this for a living uh, to fatten animals this way by stuffing a pipe in their throat, you know what they would do? They, they would stuff a pipe in their throat and you would push it, force feed them, mafat them to zayin an eagle. To fatten up a calf with an oiz diklech and seal, with the express purpose bechtei to shechter him the nacht to murder him later to kill it later licked in them and achzori is gedei lebeyesa. It's very cruel. And the halachas about avos, there's all kinds of halachas about whether you allowed to do it or not. People do it for chickens, people do it for animals, and it's halachas that you can make them today. But this was the way. This is where the Rebbe reads it. Pinchas goes ahead and murders Zimri, and the Jewish people say, "Who are you? I mean, who am I?" There's a, there's a catastrophe. There is a, a sorry liyankov. You have to act. He says not in it. They went to Moshe Rabbeinu. If Moshe Rabbeinu is silent, you be quiet. Ah, we know why. We know why. You have bloodlust. Where does your bloodlust come from? You inherited it. Your grandfather used to do this act of cruelty to stuff animals for pagan worship. You've inherited those meters and rice, and you, you have no trouble killing people. This is the way it was politicized. This is, the, this is the way the Rebbe interprets it. Actually, it's a very interesting. It has a tremendous human element to it. They said, Pinchas? Whether Zimri had to die or not is a different question. You didn't do it because you're pious. You did it because you had a chance to kill somebody and get honor for it. That's all you like to kill. It, it, it's a Yerusha. 
And the Rebbe has a long arichas, which I'm not going to learn with you, in which he argues that Zimri was a man of kindness. Zimri was a Jewish leader. And as such, he was extremely devoted to the people of his shevet. And he was concerned with them. And in fact, Zimri was not even involved in the immorality. He wasn't involved. The people came to him and he said, how could you sit idly while they're killing our brothers? Zimri's entire engagement in this immorality was to defend his tribe members. They came to him and he said, lead us. We, we, we've sunk into this immorality. Moshe Rabbeinu was encouraging the judges to kill us after whatever, some kind of a process, of proceedings. Stick up for us. So Zimri engages, gets involved. On his part, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a, uh, a profound act of kindness and generosity and a supreme act of kindness and generosity. And then this low life, the descendant of a bloodsucker, goes ahead and kills him. So they painted it into a position, into a model, into a scheme where Zimri was this sweet, nice guy who was Moisa Nefesh for his people. And Pinchas was bloodlust. So Abish says, Benar and Akoyin. His personality, his character, his Yichir comes from Aaron. And if you can go to page 25, you'll see what the Rebbe says. Where I made the Arab. Then what the Rebish again for Hashem says, Pinchas ben Allah ben Aden Akoyin. Adikanoas for Pinchas, the jealousness and the zealousness of Pinchas. Nemzech nit terfun. It's not rooted, what says Aben Puti, that he's, he's descendant of people who are cruel to animals. Nor Davke fun dem, but says Ben Aden. This zealotry, this, this, ju- this, this jealousy came from his descendancy from Aden Akoyin. Nor Suli dem, but says, because he has Aaron's character, namely, he pursues peace. He creates love between combatants, which people don't get along. This is why he was aroused to kill Zimri, to create peace. So they were trying to paint him into this bully, into this bloodlust person. And the Ebishe says, no, but not an Akei, it's all a part of his tendency to be kind and to have chesed and so forth and so on. Right? This is the idea. Okay. And that's enough. I mean, the Sikha obviously goes on. Hopefully, if the clock will go slow enough, we'll get back to the Sikha. But this is what the Rebbe says. Pinchas acts alone. He acts with arguably limited authority, limited reputation, limited respect. And the Jewish people say, how does this cruel guy go out to kill this wonderful and kind leader? And the Ebesheh says, no, 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 the leader is not kind. Pinchas is kind. This is the Rebbe's read on Rashi. Next Rashi. Bekane is Kenosi, because he was jealous, my jealousy. Translates Rashi, benikmoi es nikmosi, because he avenged my vengeance. You see, bekanoi means to be jealous. Benikma means to take avenge, vengeance. What's the difference between being jealous and being vengeful? Jealous is an emotion. Vengeance is an act. So the Tater describes Pinchas as being jealous. So as she says, the meaning of the word jealousy here means that he was vengeful. Other Mephashim disagree with this, Rashi. That you'll see later on, hopefully. But the Rashi says he means that he was jealous. Because he got angry. An anger shall only lick up what I should have gotten angry. And by the virtue of the fact that he got angry and I didn't need to get angry, he saved the lives of many Jewish people. Colossian, kin, any term kin who hamit chare, someone who's competing, linkoim, nikmas, dover, to avenge anything. That's what the word nikoma means. I have two questions. So Rashi says that kinna and nikoma, jealousy and vengeance, are, are essentially the same thing. I'm sorry? I got two quick questions. Please. Uh, Zimri, when Zimri approaches Moshe says, how come you could marry a Midianite and we can't? Mm-hmm. And what was his response? He didn't say a word. And, w- and how do we, how do we, uh, uh, these, these... Bepashtas, before Matan Tehidah. Bepashtas. I mean, I know you're saying there's a whole big chaos, but uh, there was some, there was some, uh, what, how do you say, precedent for this. Precedent? The Tehidah was given 40 years before. Uh-huh. Your only precedent could be from when the Torah was given. And there is no precedent for such a thing. And remember, they weren't only living with these women. They were worshipping the Pa'aya. The the women would bring them into a position where they gave them a choice. And they were the Chman Sam, Yevda And the other thing is, I read read that this was something of a supernatural act that that, uh, that Pinchas took. The Gemara says. 
Okay. But the supernatural act was not his. It was God's. He did what he did. He risked his life. He lived life and limb. He saw something has to get done. He was going to do it. He did not think about consequence at all. They wish to make ten nisim for him. The Enesim ben Azil, which is the oldest sefer really, after the Tanakh, is the Enesim ben Azil, written time in the second base of enumerates the ten miracles in the end of last week's parsha. So I guess my question, quickly, is that, generally speaking, capital punishment requires a base didn't. But it didn't require for pickles because this was a supernatural act. That's not the pshat. That's, that's, that's incorrect. Not. No, no, so no. Explain. There are a number of instances in Teda uh-huh. where Teda says that certain crimes are not punishable. You cannot try a person with these crimes. But a vigilante could kill them. What's the other? A Kayin who does certain things wrong in the base of Mikdash, they would do that to him. Because Matame, whatever it was. Masif. A Masif is, a, is, a, is, a, is not a, it's a mitzvah. It's a mitzvah. The point is that, you see, there are sins and then there are disrespect. Sometimes disrespect is worse than a sin. You know, in other words, it, it's a sin plus. Some of the disrespect is only disrespect. Habayi al is living with a shiksa is not a sin. It's a slap in the face. If a person, God forbid, has a relationship with a woman he's not allowed to have a relationship with, he can be chayv kardas, he can be chayv misa, he can get killed in a court of law. There's no punishment for this act. None. But it's a defiance of the border between Yidna and Goyim. So though it's not a sin, and there's no punishment for it, it's a chutzpah. It's a chutzpah. It's making a mockery of the Jewish people. And the Chazal, the Chazal say that it's halacha, that vigilantes act. You can't go out and kill people because you decided to. But this is one of those rare cases. And Pichas goes ahead and does it. And his impact is unbelievable. The effectiveness of this single act is remarkable. It just changes what's going on in the Jewish camp. Okay? Evan Ezra, which is on page 2. Okay, he doesn't say very much, but I want to read you inside. He says, I don't know diktok, so I'm going to try and figure it out. Maybe if he's observing why it says Bakani, but not Benikmai, but I don't know. Vatam, the idea is as follows. Kihu kine kikene. He was jealous at the Abish that was jealous. The cost of Alashem. Page two. This is Ebenezer, right there. The cause of Hashem regarding the Abish, it's written, Kael Kana, Hashem is a vengeful God, is a jealous God. Ba'avei for idol worship. It says in Chazal that most times Hashem is not jealous, Hashem is forgiving. The one instance where Hashem is jealous and non-forgiving when it comes to Ha'avei Dezara. Ve'lulehu shekina. If not for the fact that Pinchas took it upon himself to be jealous on behalf of God, Hashem would have needed to be jealous because of the idolatrous aspect to this, not the immoral aspect, but the pagan aspect of it. And Ayisi Mechala kol Yisro. Hashem said, I wiped out every single last Jew, because of my jealousy. So Pinchas saves the Jewish nation by being jealous and sparing me the need to become jealous myself. Agat Ebenezer says, Ramban, which is right opposite the Ebenezer on page 2. No, same page. Right there. Hashem is informing Meisha Rabbeinu, Asher Kine Lepinchas, uh, he's going to give great reward to Pinchas. Al kinasi for his jealousy. Asher kini lelakov. He was jealous on behalf of God. Valad zdoka shaosa for the righteousness that he did him Yisrael for the Jewish people. Lechaper aleim to atone for them. Velay mesu kulam v'magaver. They didn't all die in the plague. And if not for Pinchas' act of zealotry, they would have all died in the plague. Vitzivo and Hashem says to Meisha, What's the pshat leimer? Sheidiel Yisrael should inform the Jewish people. Shahu Kain God Olayelam. He's a high priest forever. Okay, v'zeh tam, which is why it says in the some subsequent pasuk, lochein amer. Therefore, you should speak. Sheyagid zeh be Yisrael. He should announce this amongst the Jewish people. That's what. For Yidavad the Shem of Meishah, Shem says to Meishah Rabbeinu, Leimer. We don't know what that Leimer means. He tells him, this nephew of yours, Pinchas, this great nephew, Pinchas ben Lazar ben Arkein was jealous so that I didn't need to be jealous. And he saved the Jewish people. I want the Jews to know about it. I want Yidin to know that he saved their lives and therefore I'm giving him B'nit making him into a Koyin. So now, 
remember one of the nuances that we're mentioning tangentially is the Lamer and Lachay Namer. There's a redundancy here. Right? I told it to you a moment before. In Pasuk, it says, Lamer means to repeat. And then he speaks to him how he favors Pinchas. And then Pasuk Yud Bey, he says, Lachay Namer, therefore tell the Jewish people. The question is, the first, Vaydabar Hashem Amesha shouldn't say Lamer. Hashem is telling to Moshe Rabbeinu, he's not telling him to repeat Pinchas genealogy to the Jews. Pinchas favoritism and righteousness to the Jews. He's simply telling them that they're going to be Kayanim. So the way you understand this, Ramban is to say as follows. Hashem says to Moshe, I want you to tell him two things. Tell him first of all, he saved their lives. And tell him second of all, I'm making him into Kayan forever. So that's why there's two statements. Vaydabar Hashem Amesha Lamer, and then it says, Lochei Namer. Tell them that Pinchas saved their lives and tell them this is going to be his reward. And you'll see in other Mepharshim more details about this. In fact, one of the Mepharshim actually observes how it says, Vayadabar Hashem Amesha. Why doesn't it say Vayemer Hashem Amesha? Vayadabar is a severe term. Vayemer is a softer term. Hashem is speaking to Meshach Rabbeinu and giving him, in fact, what amounts to a favorable message. It's say Vayemer Hashem Amesha. Lamer and the Mepharshim talk about it. Pinchas' son becomes a coin too? Sure. Yeah. For well, posterity. The way it worked was that Kohan, Kohuna is a, it's a patrilineal line. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's given over from father to son. Adam was a Kohan. His children were Kohan. Pinchas was one of Adam's grandchildren. But he was born in Egypt. And the law of any person born to a priest is a priest only works from when the time the Abishtag made the priests. So he was excluded from the priesthood because he was too old. He was born in Egypt. What does that have to do with the, the fact that he was born? Because Hashem made five priests personally. Right. Aaron, Nadav Avi, Elazar, Nisamar, and their children. Pinchas was born already. And their children means that those were going to be born consequent uh-huh. after this. Okay. So 40 years later, when he does this unbelievable act of martyrdom in, 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 in Kina and Nekama, the Ebishi gives him elevation to the mother of priesthood. Did he have son sons at the time? Who? Pinchas. I don't know, but his children were Kainim Gedalim for a long time. Pinchas' children were Kainim Gedalim until the time of Eli. Eli had Kainim with some Pinchas. And then they forfeited it because Eli behaved inappropriately. And they gave it to Isamar. And it didn't take very long to go back to Pinchas' family. Most of the Kainim Gedalim, historically, I saw, in the, he says, I think 18 Kainim Gedalim in the time of the first base of Mikdash and 80 Kainim Gedalim in the time of the second base of Mikdash, all from Pinchas. What's next? Sipano. Sipano was the bottom of page two. He was jealous on my behalf. Says the Sipano He did my vengeance. Page two. Page two. Right there. Yeah. Sha'asa Nikmasi. He did my jealousy. in the eyes of all of them. When they'll see this. They're not going to object. They will be atoned for not objecting to the sins of the Peshim in these, in the sinners. Ubazes says the Zippon. And this is the reason that Heishev is Hamasim Aleim removed their, his anger. It's like a Valdek Echidish, the Zippon says. He said like this. The Jewish people are watching the immorality go on and they don't do anything. They should be punished for that. The crime of Klal Yisrael was not one of immorality. The crime of Klal Yisrael was passivity, inaction. When Pinchas kills Zimri, he removes the onus, he removes the criticism of Klal Yisrael. How come you aren't acting? How come you aren't speaking up? How come you aren't protesting? And so forth and so on. So the Jewish people were saved by Pinchas. How? Because Pinchas kills Zimri in public. And no one said a word. No one saying a word for the murder of Zimri was their way of atoning for no one having said a, no one having said a word for the sin of Shevet Shimon. So it wasn't only that Pinchas killed Zimri. He killed him publicly and he gave Klal Yisrael an opportunity to correct what they hadn't done originally now. And therefore the The Pasuk says, He was jealous amongst the Jewish people, and this saved the Jewish people. And therefore you have to give Pinchas Akud. And I would, I would suppose that you have to say the same thing again. The two, the layman and the Lachay would be the same thing. The first one is to teach Yidin what Meshavina did on their behalf. 
And the second thing is to elevate Moshe Rabbeinu uh, uh, to a level of, of a kaya. Okay? This is the Sipon. Now we go to the tour. The tour is on page 9. <laughs> and the tour says <coughs> something very similar to what the Rashi says, the way the Rebbe explains it in the Sikh, there's no identical. <coughs> What's the issue? Pinchas kills Zimri. I don't understand. What's the complexity? Is it right or is it wrong? That's all. Is it right to kill Zimri or wrong to kill Zimri? Make up your mind. If it's right, if it's wrong, why did he do it? And if it's right, why didn't anybody else do it? This is the Taz's analysis of Rashi's analysis. And the Taz comes up with a very interesting explanation. It's a very long Taz. This is, the Taz Pinesha Chumash is rather elaborate. He says, there are instances where people do sin, which is no punishment. That's it. This wasn't that. Because had that been the case, Allah wouldn't have killed him. There are sins, which is a punishment in a court of law. You go to a Sanhedrin, you have witnesses, you have the trial, and you get punished, and you get... Uh, the, 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 um, the punishment is carried out. <coughs> then you have sins where you can't punish the person. On the other hand, the person is not innocent, is not, not guilty. Certain people can punish them. And he brings three rules. And I, under, I circle them near the end. God Ladoir, Miyuchas, and the Moon Allah What's that in English? The leader of the generation who comes from a good stock, a great genealogy, and he was appointed to judge based on the leadership of the prince. So what happens is Pinchas goes ahead and kills Zimri. What's the Jewish people's reaction? He's a God Ladar. He's a leader. He's a Miyuchas. He has a good genealogy. He's Yisrael's grandson. He's a Moon Allah Dinah Piyan Nasi. He's employed to do this. You understand? None of them. I'm sorry? None of them. So Pinchas doesn't have any of these criteria. So the Abish that says, Pinchas ben Allah ben Aran Akoyin, I say, he is a God Ladar. I say, he is a Miyuchas. And I say, he is a Moon Allah Dinah. In other words, the Taz is saying that Rashi's issue is, if Hashem, if Tayyid requires him, he should be killed, someone else should have killed him. If Tayyid requires him, should be killed, why did Pinchas kill him? And the answer is because he needed a special kind of person to kill him. And Pinchas met those criteria. Who were those criteria? The God Ladar, the leader of the generation, yeah. with a good genealogy, a good bloodline. What are you saying? That person could kill as a Wild vigilante. Line. That's right. In other words, Another person could not have done what Pinchas did. And that's why they so did not. Another person could. That's right. And because it's not a sin, but it's a special category of It's a power. chutzpah. It's, it's a chutzpah. chutzpah. And so is a chutzpah better or worse than a sin? A leader of a generation could do it. And who else? If you have these three criteria, that one. Have all three. It seems that way to me. He brings different places in the Shulchan Aruch. Ah. Uh, three of them or one of them? I think it means all three. What is the other two? That he comes from good genealogy and that he was appointed to be a judge. Uh-huh. This fact. He was a, certainly a great leader. He was Pinchas ben Lazar. Everybody knew who he was. Hayim Afortsim was a was known as a judge. Vesu moreover, the other Rabbi to the contrary, Miyuchas who she he is very very favored in terms of his genealogy. Pinchas. She yichas the Achar Aaron Akein. He's he's a descendant of Aaron Akein. Memeil Roy lekach. He deserves for this kind of a judgment. Umasha Amrush ain't the Rishus Ladon. And when, the, when they, the, those Chazal who say that he had no permission to judge Jewish people, Azeh Amar Agamar, the Gemara says, Bakani Eskinasi, Vishlichusi Asa. He was jealous on my behalf, and he did my mission. Akain Shapir Asa Bacha Asa. That's what he did. But he did what correct. In other words, the Taz holds Taka like the questioners. That this could not have been a conventional capital case. It could not have been a case for which there's no punishment at all. It has to be something in the middle. And this is the story. Pinchas acted in a case where. Even if his action was correct, it was important whether he was qualified to do that act. And the Abishah says, absolutely he was. Okay? This is the task. So the task really is a different commentary than the Rebbe Sikha. The Rebbe said that they looked at Pinchas as being a jealous person. And the Rebbe says, no, they weren't jealous. Right? They just said, who is he to do this? 
Only certain kind of people are permitted to do this. And Nebishtik comes along and he says, he's worth it. Let's go back to our original question. To repeat the Klal Yisrael. Pinchas ben Eloza ben Adon HaKoyin Heishev as Chamasi. And then the next person he says, L'chein ne'em of Neishol 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 Neishol. What's the Pshat? Hashem tells Moshe, tell him two things. Tell him that he's a Nasi Ador. Tell him that he has good genealogy. And tell him that he's a judge. And then tell them a separate issue that he's going to be given the gift of Kuhn. So Vaidabar Hashem of Moshe, Hashem says to Moshe, lay me to repeat. To repeat what? To repeat his favorite is for Pinchas. That's all. L'chein amay means different. They have to behave a certain way. Yeah? Shay. The Jewish people are angry because Pinchas killed a leader. Right? And um They're viewing Zimri as this great hero and Pinchas as this unidentified, unknown, outsider villain. Hashem says, no, you got it all wrong. <laughs> He's the insider. Zimri is the outsider. Ainli Yisrael Haseini al shouldn't hate him so much for murdering Zimri. Ki He did them a great favor because Sheheshev HaSchamasi he removed my anger from them and my anger is worse than his. But like Hilisi and I didn't invite the Jewish people out. The im Yisna'uhu And if they're going to hate him, klum, it's not going to mean anything. I'm not sure what the Tesis means with these few words. Let's just leave the Tesis alone. So the Tesis also says something which I've repeatedly stated, that the Ebishter is congratulating Pinchas through Moshe Rabbeinu for, for saving Klal Yisrael. Next. The next is Eitadas Teif. We haven't learned Eitadas Teif in a while. It's on pages 10 and 11. And there's quite a few different interpretations that this last time gives. <coughs> okay? Okay? As, and there's a number of different points. So listen to the, this, the, 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 the Rabbeinu Chaim Vital. Rabbeinu Chaim Vital has one Pasha Takasha. Pinchas is the only hero in the world. You, you read the Chumash. He's the first man to do something sacrificial. He's the first person to put his neck out for Yidin. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't do it. Aaron didn't do it. So the way he 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 splits up Taka. Remember, going back to the layman and the lachena moir, to the double lashon. What does that mean? Shem Hashem says to Moshe, layman, tell the Jews what what that Pinchas is a nice guy. That's none of the Jewish people's business. What the Jewish people need to know is lachena moir. Therefore, tell the Jewish people, I'm going to give them a covenant of peace. So why does it say twice, Lehmer? So the Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, the Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, the Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, the Rabbi says, the Rabbi says, there's two issues here. The first issue is to enlighten what was unique about Pinchas act of martyrdom, what separates it from martyrdom of Moshe Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, and so forth. And separately from that, he's telling him to appoint him to the priesthood. And later on, on the next page, there's, there's another kvetch, there's another nuance which he adds, which is also very interesting. So, Vaha'inyin, page 10, page 10 first, yes? Vaha'inyin, it's, it's the third line in. Ki chashash Hashem yizbarech. Hashem was afraid, lebal yeim emoshim, emoshim shouldn't protest, manishtana pinchas, what makes him so special? Mikol b'nei gilif from other people. And he goes into a whole long discussion how his grandfather Aaron had Mesir Nefesh and Moshe Be'em Mesir Nefesh. What makes him so special? So on the second column, I made an arrow on top of an Aleph, right? Right? The second column, I made an arrow on top of an Aleph. Mm-hmm. Three lines before that, it says, Ach HaKavon. Rabbi Tuchi, we got the place, yes? Ach HaKavon. The idea is as follows. Vaidabar Hashem al Moshe Zeh HaPazah the first pasuk, God Almighty says to Moshe Rabbeinu, "Shu Pinchas ben Elazar v'chuli." You should know this is a man named Pinchas ben Elazar. V'chol sipur v'dibur ashvach hazeh. All of these stories and words of praise that Hashem says in pasuk Yud Aleph of the pasha, the second pasuk of the pasha, Hayalei Melei. The intent was to tell him, Iker. Um, the priority was simply to tell him. Number one, I want to give you information. 
And number two, v'hashlichas. He also gives him a mission. And what's the mission? V'hi pasek hasheni, which is a subsequent pasek. L'chein ha-meir l'hein l'neisim l'vechuli. He says two separate issues. There's a vaydaber Hashem on Moshe. Hashem speaks to Moshe Rabbeinu to give him information about why Pinchas is so praiseworthy. And they in l'chein emed l'bnei Yisrael ashlichas. There's two separate issues. What the layman is at the moment, he doesn't say at this particular juncture. And I suppose layman could mean that the praise should also be repeated to Klal Yisrael. So the Ravenu Bechay, I'm sorry, the Etadas Tevara goes ahead and enumerates four things, four things that set Pinchas apart from other Jewish leaders who have risked life and limb to save Klal Yisrael. Okay? He says first the praise, the who, and it says false. Pinchas the Goyim. Yiritze. You have the place? On the left side of your page is an arrow and an aleph. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's what I'm reading. Yiritze, the underlined word is Yiritze. He ni Aaron Zekeni Hoya. Aaron, his grandfather was, Uma Elum Le Kina. Kina Sade Shem Be Yadi Oba Koychai. He did not ever be jealous for Hashem. Ha Omnam Tafas Umnesku Nasal Hakti Ketedes. Did he not use his position as priest to burn incense and self save a bunch of Jews after the story of, of Kairach? Scoot down four lines. So Moshe Hashem says, yes, yes. <laughs> his grandfather Aaron also was jealous like his grandson was jealous. Omnam Pinchas Ben Benoi. Pinchas says, grandson is Chazik B'Gvori Yisrael Al-Zkene. His Mesidus Nefesh was greater. How was it greater? V'hu? Ki Masheheshe V'sachema. How did Pinchas cancel Hashem's anger? didn't burn incense he was jealous he put on a garment of jealousy he sacrificed his life with 125,000 people from Shevet Shimon I have no idea where he gets his number from Hashem says yes there have been other Jews who have led Klal Yisrael had Mesidus Nefesh but never put their neck out and said here take me Pinchas did that. Number two, Gam, Remes Peter Sheni, Vamri There's another aspect to the unusual character of Pinchas Mesiris Nefesh, that it was in the midst of the Jewish people. Vahinyan. Kizulas Mesiris, Pinchas as Atzma, in addition to the fact that Pinchas sacrificed himself, Lemisa Atzumu Mukhrechas Kanal, to die of what would have been a miserable death, and a certain death, and so forth. For that alone, he deserved a reward. Okay? He deserves this reward. But Gam, there's another factor also. The nature of the sin that Pinchas was repairing was, was intolerable. When I gave you the introduction to tonight's class, I tried to give you a sense of the lawlessness and the chaos and the disrespect. I took it from here. You have to visualize the reality of it. Here's the nation of God, 40 years in the desert. They've been conditioned to be Jewish. And they're not just sinning. They're sinning in Moshe's face. The breakdown of respect, the breakdown of everything Kali Yisrael stood for was so complete, it's, 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 it's catastrophic. Right? The whole Jewish person, Jewish nation deserved annihilation. For who? First of all, it was the sin of living with a shiksa. Shu oven chamu, which is a very severe punishment, which will be mentioned later. Like I told you before, it's not a sin in the Vestach, in the punishment sense. It's a sin in the chutzpah sense. But there was another aspect here. This was in public. And we know what Yiddishkeit says about Parhesia, Yiparhesia, who was Sodomy Yisrael, Chai of Adam Limses, Asma Lemisa. If there was 10 Jews and the situation, of Mesir's Nefesh, Al Kiddush Hashem Yemuchoyu to Mesir Nefesh because it's in public. Uh, skip a little bit. Mikoshkin, how much more so? Avain Gevia, if it was sitting with a Goya, Ubefar Hesia, and it was in public. Veinipar Hasish La Sodom the other. It wasn't ten people. The whole Jewish world. Alara, close, and that's call you saw the entire Jewish people. Umei Shavani Bob, for the Haya Echad Mehem, not one of them is Shakin and the Shem Yizbarach. It was an awful sin in the most public in disrespectful way, no one says a word. Wasn't Zimri his tent? Zimri came out to Moshe Rabbeinu and then he went into the tent. But first he came to Moshe Rabbeinu and laughed in his face. 
So Pinchas follows him. You understand? All the people were outside? Yeah, I suppose. So the second reason Pinchas is so favored, first of all, he's killing himself to save God's honor. Second of all, it was a public disgrace. And a public disgrace is the worst kind of Chil Hashem. The Allah is that a Chil Hashem is irreparable. You can't save, you can't correct a Chil Hashem except through Rahman Hassan Hepachachai, through death. And Pincha saves the day by killing Zimri. Turn to page 11. Just flip over your step. Number three, Gam. Rem is Gedulas Maisov. There's another aspect to the greatness of what Pinchas did, and that is as follows. If a tzara is gonna happen, Yimu. Gam remez, you see it? Ki hamagdim tefillah letzara v'nimot. If a person, if a person prays in anticipation of a tzara, that means a tzara hasn't happened. What's a tzara? Tzara is trouble, problems. It hasn't yet occurred, but it may occur. Good evening, hello. Ain't a kol kachoshev. It's not that great an event. Kivan shabo, I love hatzara because when the tzara was coming, this pali davan nimelt and he was saved. But in this case, it was different because the tzara had already started. The anger of Hashem, the wrath of Hashem, had already been unleashed. V'nei dan we know as a rule, kivan shnitan shus lamashchis once the the angel of destruction is given permit permit any Rosha Gam any Once he once he's let loose, you can't stop him and you can't turn him off. Pinchas retrieves an anger that's already been unleashed, that already had manifest. This was an unusually effective act of jealousy and correction. You understand? This is a third reason Pinchas is singled out. And lastly, by the Dalit, Oy G'day it was a fourth advantage, Kish. Um, because, I'll, I'll, save, I'll tell it to you by heart, when Aaron stood up to save people by the story of the incidents with Kairach, they had rebelled against Kairach. Kairach I'm sorry, against Aaron. Kairach's rebellion was against Aaron HaKoyin. And they were claiming that they're interested in God's honor. Pinchas was fighting for God himself. This Zimri, these B'nai Shimon, were not rebelling against Aaron HaKoyim or even against Moshe they were making fun of the Eibishter so what Pinchas expressed his jealousy towards was far more significant so Pasek Yudalaf of our passion Pinchas but the whole point of this Pasek is Hashem says to Moshe yes there have been many jealous Jews many people have put themselves out to save Kla Yisrael he's different Pinchas ben Allah ben Aaron HaKoyim Pinchas ben Allah ben Aaron is different because was, first of all, he risked his life. How was it more against Hashem than Moshe? No, because it was. Hashem says, be moral. And the Jewish people are laughing in the Ebishter's face. Is it comparing it to Kairach? To to Moshe, Moshe. Moshe. rebelled against Aharon. This is the rebellion against the Ebishter himself. All, I mean, it's all essentially, isn't it against Moshe? I mean, they come to Moshe each time. They should... Moshe right, but it was the mitzvahs of the Eibishter. Your, your point is actually well taken. I mean, I don't have an adequate answer to your question. But, honestly, but the Pashtas, it wasn't Moshe, it was the commandments that Moshe Rabbeinu gave over from the Eibishter. It seems like all the incidents in the Torah is like the Jewish people against Moshe. All the negative incidents. Right, okay. Uh, I was just not, I was wondering about that before instead of just... Uh, Let's leave it. I, I, let let me answer you by saying I don't know. I mean, the, the, he says the fetish. It, I circle the words. Never kvedi is what of mama should rebel against the Eibishter himself. Mm. So pasuk yud of this parsha is Hashem telling Moshe, Moshe, I want to explain to you why I'm making such a big tzimis at the What he did, nobody did. And then pasuk yud says lachain emel nei yisrael tell the Jewish people that I'm making him a koyin. So there's two issues. First of all, the Shvach, the praise of Pinchas, and second of all, the Shlichas, the mission, they were going to make him into a Koyan. And I guess we would say, tell the Jewish people the praise of Pinchas, and then tell them the Shad that he's going to get. But in the next paragraph, he adds another Kvetch. And that is, how come it says Vayadabir? Vayadabir is a Loshan of Gavura. It should say, Vayoymer Hashem Moshe Leimer. You hear? Mm-hmm. See, you know what he says? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read it inside because of time, but he. He said, Hashem, on Maisha. Hashem speaks critically to Moshe Rabbeinu. Why did Pinchas kill Zimri? You should have killed him. 
the Rabbi Rechaim. By Dabra Shalom Moshe, Hashem speaks critically to Moshe Rabbeinu. Why did it have to come down to Pinchas? You should have killed him. When the Jewish people came to you and they said, Bas Yisraimi, you should have taken a spear and put it right through him. Where were you? Lamer. Now speak sweetly and softly and praise Pinchas. <laughs> And the Chayda made up Nei Yisrael. Issue number three: the difference to get the kavod. If Rav Chaim Vital wouldn't say this, we would never be able. To, we've had a few like this already, where the Rav Chaim Vital interprets the Vaydavid as being a criticism of Meishar Rabbeinu himself. But they're beautiful commentary, beautiful. It's such original and beautiful pshatim in the pesukim. Why didn't Moshe do it? Why didn't Moshe do it? If you look in Chumash Rashi, the impression you get was that Moshe was at a loss. It's hard was, to imagine, was, but true. He was married to Medjanai. Fine, but I, I, it, it's more than that. It was the chutzpah of it. The chutzpah of it. The chutzpah of it. It was just so audacious. He was no Gavadavah. That's what he's saying, but I, I, I don't think it's enough. I, I, it's true, but I'm sure there's more to it. it. It wasn't, you know, people fall by degrees, you know, a community... The it goes through a spiritual collapse, it happens slowly. This wasn't a spiritual collapse. This was a cataclysm. It was like all of a sudden the camp of Jews turned into, into it turned into Rome. Like this. And Pinchas had the clarity to realize something has to be done. What? They went ahead and he did it. It's taka amazing. This was not something like the ego, it was some you know, all, you know, all, all. This was apparently Shevet Shim. I mean, it's hard to know from the different. There's so many different ways of understanding who did what and so forth and so on. Um, now we have an Alshech. Alshech is gorgeous. The problem with the Alshech is that it's already ten after eleven. Alshech is really, really gorgeous. Mamish Gavaldik. It's on page twelve and thirteen. And 14, and it's very, very long. And they're usually long also. He links this parsha to the last parsha. If I had 20 more minutes, I would, I would delve into the Alshech. I really, really want to go on to the Hasidus, which is, it's very important for us to learn the Hasidus. Because, um, but he links it to the last parsha. What is he in the end of the parsha? Vayar Pinchas. Pinchas saw. They got up from the community. He took a spear. And he went into the tent and he did what he had to do. See, he's medayik that the Reimach, Reish Mem Ches, first of all, it's 248, that's the Gematev of Rahum. And it happens to be Reish Mem Ches, the 248 mitzvahs of the Torah. Or slightly differently, the 248 limbs of a person's body. And the al develops an idea. The idea is that when people act in a pure and a holy way, they metamorphose, they become new people. They become changed fundamentally. If you look on page 12, Vihine, let's read a little bit of this. Um, when a person does a mitzvah, there's a number of advantages that take place. First of all, first of all, there's a great merit in doing a mitzvah. Gam, in addition, you have the place... Um, Rabbi Yitzchak, page 12. You see where I made my arrow? Yes. Gam Kotz Musay, Imruche Gviyase. His spirit and his body, Koinim Eich and Kedusha. They acquire a new quality of holiness. Venasim Beria Chadasha. They become a new creation. Berayv Koyach Kedusha from the great potency of holiness. Hanish Bas, boy, which flows into them. I dare have the mitzvahs that they've done. Kalkain, see the Lord of God. Meneinu, he goes into a whole thing about brachas. That when we say, a, we do a mitzvah, we say, Asher Kiddushan of a mitzvah of Shehu. I just scooted down two lines. Kal Yedei mitzvah of Yisbarach. We do Hashem's mitzvahs. Anu miskachim umitarim. We become holy, we become pure. Okay? Well, Canaan therefore, Avinu Shema Shemaim, our Father in Heaven, not so this because he wanted to give merit to the Jewish people. But Teisha de Shemlon of God Almighty gave us misper mitzvahs I say. He gave us the number of mitzvahs. I say, like the 240 limbs of our body. Leman, be for the sake of, that behem through them, yigdal yigdash gamachem, we can make great and holy the body. You understand? So one mitzvah elevates one limb, another mitzvah elevates another limb. This act, 
didn't halify, didn't bring purity and holiness to Pinchas in one aspect of him. The whole Ramach, the whole 400, 248 limbs of Pinchas were transformed through the single act of jealousy uh, on behalf of the Where did the Ramach come from? Is the end of last week's parsha. Uh, it says he picked up a spear. The uh-huh. Hebrew word for spear is Ramach. Uh-huh. And he goes back. You see, Vayar Pinchas Ben, Vayikach Ramach Biyode, Zion. And then he goes back and he analyzes the end of last week's page. You understand that normally, if you don't mind going to page 13, yes, page 13, um, you see I underlined the word Ha'evet and Kalevadev, it's, it's, it's about 10 lines in the bottom of the right column. Mm-hmm. So it says the line before, Kiderach Ha'isa Mitzvah, normally when a person does a mitzvah, Lekadesh Ba Ha'evet Shenases Ba, you bring sanctity to one particular limb. Achine Pinchas Kiddush Kalevadev. He sanctified his entire body. I did say mitzvah be'eved He did mitzvah with one limb, and he brought holiness to his whole body. He took all two hundred and forty-eight limbs in his hand. Ki his one hand. Shu be'eved which is only one limb. Laka kol hanamach e'evedim. He took all two hundred and forty-eight limbs. Lakicha atzmis, and because since he risked his entire life. Even though he killed them only with his hand, he brought holiness to his whole person, and that's why he becomes a kohen. First taste. Valkane and therefore the staple is going to drive us now mad. Laidia Hadavar to inform us of this thing, who is Barakh Lamesha. Boy he comes a Yemen, he says Lame to say. Pin Khazbin Allah gave who Lame to tell her. He ne loy bilvad. Not only for the fact that Nasa Kol Atme Bedya Khadasha did he become a new person. B'shefa kedusha with a holy flow. This is a gavaldik echidish. What the alchich is about to say. Asher ishpi al atan he brought onto himself. Of course, vayikach reimach biyade means he took all two hundred forty-eight limbs and put them in his hand. He was willing to kill himself for this act, and therefore he halified his whole self. But I got a secret for you. Pinchas ben elazer ben aron akoy. You know he translates it. The impact of Pinchas' act affected that his father and grandfather became holier. What's the pshat? When Pinchas was born, Elazar was not a koyin. And Adam was not a koyin. So it says, Pinchas ben Elazar ben Adam, it shouldn't say a koyin. Because when Pinchas was born, Elazar and Adam were not koyin. It says the al sheikh he took his whole life into his hand and he halified not only himself, but that retroactively Elazar and Adam became koyin him earlier that they had been kayin him so the Pinchas is now a kayin you hear it's like it's turning back the clock he says ki im gamba he added light and merit to his father and his grandfather who anyway that b'shem ha-meisha who ma'di b'nei lov ha-lehu leimer Pinchas v'geimer leimer ma'sharoi leimer hu what does it say it's Pinchas v'geimer right v'hu ki in it Pinchas le'hoya lo'y ben ish kayin v'lechad ish kayin Pinchas was neither the son of the grandson or a kayin or the Emes in truth, Ben Elazar Ben Aaron Yikra. He should be called the son of Elazar, the son of Aaron. It shouldn't say Hakoyin. Achloi Ben Elazar Ben Aaron Hakoyin. Why? You see what I'm reading? Fourth line of the second column. Kalei Bihi Valdei when he was born. Lo Hayak Koyin Lev Lezikne. Kedai Lenim Shachu. Says the Al Sheikh Amar who is Barak the Ebrister says, Hina Yedei Maisaze. Through the act that Pinchas did, should all laymen who should say the following. Who? Pinchas does an act and he makes his grandparents holy. So holy that Aaron becomes a Koyin from the time he was conceived and born. His impact of Pinchas' act was not only that he brought holiness to his whole body, he brought holiness retroactively to his father and grandfather and he becomes a Koyin ben Koyin ben Benishal Koyin. Very, very interesting commentary. Huh? Mr. Zay. So he becomes a new person and he brings holiness to his father and his grandfather. I just want to show you one more kvetch. Oid Yitachin Bishir. The next paragraph. You see it? The next paragraph. Rashi says, what is the translation of the word Bakanoi? That he was jealous. Right? What is the translation of the word Binokmoi? When he was vengeant. What word should be used here? It shouldn't say Bekani as Kenasi when he was jealous to jealousy. It should say Benakbay as Nikmase when he, when he avenged the vengeance. Why does it say Bekani as Kenasi? See, he has one more beautiful thing that I'm going to share with you and the rest you'll do on your own. 
from the moment when he saw the bad act and he decided to fix it from that point, point forward the Ebishter made him special Pinchas ben Allah Zabanan the Koyim became jealous. The moment of his jealousy he becomes a Koyim. The result of the jealousy was vengeance. But Hashem did not reward him for his act. Hashem rewarded him for the jealousy alone. So Rashi says, B'kan es kinase means, B'nok me'as nikmas. He says, I'll should know. The very fact that Pinchas got that zealous and he resolved to give his life to, the, to, to honor the, the desecration, the Abishta's name, for the jealousy alone, for the, for the resolve, for the preparedness. He became a Kayan, his father became a Kayan earlier than he had been a Kayan, and his grandfather became a Kayan earlier than he had been a Kayan. So not only is he a Kayan, he's a Kayan, the son of a Kayan, the grandson of a Kayan. What, what do you mean say jealous? What do you mean jealous of? Jealous of? Vengeful, vengeful. There's a Hebrew word, no. The Hebrew word for vengeance is nekoma. The Hebrew word for jealousy is kino. Okay? Jealousy, the real word is zealousness. But the word zealousness is not the correct translation. I, I'm really not using that word, even though that's the word that's used. Because, I'll tell you why. I, I once saw a film <laughs> where the Rebbe showed this, 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 this mathematician a piece of paper from his brother. They have it in the... In the, in, 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 in the um, in the gem videos. So when he comes back to the Rebbe, he says to the Rebbe, I looked at the papers that you gave me, he says it's unfinished, and it, it's lacking notes, and but it's worth publishing. So the Rebbe says to him, when I gave it to you, I didn't want to tell you who it was from, I didn't want to affect your objectivity, but it's my brother's. So he says to the Rebbe, but he clearly didn't work with books, he had no access to a library. So the Rebbe uses this word. He was very jealous of his independence. That's the Rebbe's word. Now the Rebbe's English, you could say, is not necessarily accurate, but the Rebbe's English is meaningful Very je- the word jealous means protective mm-hmm. that's why I'm using this word Pinochus became protective on behalf of God jealous you diss God I'm going to teach you but it's not I'm going to get back at you I'm going to correct it and no one else felt like that no one else felt like that to the extent that they're willing to sacrifice their lives Pinochus did not go to survive you have to understand that there was no way in the world he thought about surviving 22,000 men are waiting with swords to kill him. You're saying Hashem rewarded him for the feeling. For the Hashem life. rewarded him for the feeling and the resolution alone. The decision to act was enough. Uh-huh. And the proof is, because it doesn't say, yes nikmasi, which would mean when he acted out the vengeance in fact, but yes kinasi, by the jealousy alone. Which means to say that the content of the Maimed is not very strongly linked to the beginning and the end. That's why again this week, like I did last week, I printed on page 19 the Chavtes. The Reb Marash Smaim. Because this Smaim from the Reb Marash, I suspect, is the source of the Maim and I in Gimel and the Maim and I in Hay that I published here, that I printed here. Okay? So what are we looking at? Okay, I think we're going to do page 18. And the reason we do page 18 is simply because it's the shortest version. You have essentially three versions of the same issue. And we'll do page 18, and then in Mitzvah Hashem, you'll, you'll uh, of course, between now and next Tuesday, learn the Ayin Gimel, and the Ayin Hay, and then of course the whole Maimah from the Rebbe Marash, and the entire Sikha from the Rebbe, which is printed. <coughs> you'll do it all until next week, and then we'll give you a test. The, the, the Maimonim asked the same question, all the Mufashim ask, but they give original answers. Okay? On the right side of the page, notice Aleph Samach, Aleph, Aleph Samach, I cut and pasted. This is just the beginning and the end of the Maimon. Right? 
Pinchas ben Allah zev a game hey shivas chambas pab nei shalva game lachein and when he listens to see shalom v'tzarek lahav and the question is va'alei meishar abeinu all of us shalom meishar abeinu himself come up yom many times you have the place. Hey, Shivchei, Mamei Abnei Yisrael took away anger from the Jewish people. Vale Metzinu Etzle. We don't find by him. First of all, Akadas Teva. Hashem should celebrate him. And second of all, in Asinas Chara, that to reward him. Amaduwa Kasha Pinchas Hey Shivchei Mamei Yisrael. And why, when Pinchas brings back the anger of the Jewish people, I met he Nason Levachuli. And so he has a bunch of questions. But that's the basic question. So go to the end of the Maimon now. The peace that you have Masha Kasha Pinchas Ben Allah Zeve Gamer Hey Shivas Chamasi Ve Gamer. So he brings two points. One point that Pinchas is Eliyahu Hanavi, right? And of course, there's different opinions whether this means that he was a Gilgal of Eliyahu Hanavi or he actually lived this long. He brings Svarim that say that he actually lived this long and so forth and so on. If Pinchas is Eliyahu Hanavi, then Kabbalistically, Pinchas is the Madrega of Ban. Eliyahu Hanavi was also the Madrega of Ban. You'll see the relevance of this soon. And the second point is that Pinchas is the reincarnation of another Venaviyu. If you look seven lines into the paragraph, it says, V'zeo she Pinchas tikin chet another Venaviyu k'ma shikos v'bezeyer. V'hainu this means, Ki another Venaviyu hoya avedasim v'bechinas ratzu, another Venaviyu serves Hashem simply by running to the Yevishter. Rakshah hoya v'bechinas ratzu levad, v'lehatzu ba'ashuv, they ran to Hashem, they didn't want to live in this world, and that's why they died, right? Go down one line. O Pinchas tikin zeh. Pinchas corrected it, this Ratzu, without Shuvah, a day, Mesidus Nefesh. Who's the Mesidus Nefesh? I'm sorry, it's all in the first paragraph. Sorry? Oh, yeah, 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 okay, I'm sorry. I'm reading over here. Okay? I started off by saying, La Pisa, Yuva, Mashkosa, Pinchas, right? Dehini, Yom, Razal, first point is Pinchas, Eliyo. Pinchas is Eliyo. Underline those words. What's the significance of Pinchas being Eliyo? So again, first of all, you have to go into the different opinions. Does that mean that Pinchas actually lived 500 years till the time of Eliyo, one of a yes or no? You understand? There's different opinions, or it's only a Gilgal, or whatever the case may be. Second of all, by the virtue of linking Pinchas to Eliyo, we're making Pinchas into the Madrega of Ban. So he says that Pinchas is Ban. You'll see Eliyo, one of is Ban. This is a classic fact in Kabbalah. So since Pinchas is Eliyahu, Pinchas is also Ban. You'll see soon the significance of this. The second thing he says, a few lines after that, V'zehu she Pinchas tiken chet nada v'aviyu. You see what I'm reading? A couple of lines after. That Pinchas corrected the sin of nada v'aviyu. V'shikosu b'zaya. V'hainu, what this means. Ki nada v'aviyu. No, the men of Yehoi, you have a dosam. Their service to Hashem was bechinas rotsu. They ran to Hashem. Raksha ha yu bechinas rotsu levad. They ran to Hashem. Valei rotsu barashu didn't want anything to do with the world. Ukmai shikas, as the pasuk says about no, the men of Yehu, because of us, the lifni avaya of a game a day approached God about nothing to do with the world. V'zehu shahoya hamesiris nefesh alahem rak benish mosam. They gave away their souls to God. V'aguf nishakayim, the body remained whole because it had nothing to do with the body. Or Pinchas. Pinchas corrects Nadav and Aviyu's re- refusal to be in this physical world. Tikkens out Ayadeh HaMesidus Nefesh. Who is Mesidus Nefesh? So before we proceed, before we proceed, we have two issues. The first is that we're linking Pinchas to Eliyahu, which has to do with Ban. And you'll see momentarily that the opposite of Ban is what? What's the opposite of Ban? Oh. Ma. Who's Ma? Moshe. So, by linking Pinchas to Eliyahu, we're going we're gonna to compare and contrast Pinchas's Bekani Esnik Pinasi, Pinchas's Hei Shiv Chaim, bring it to anger to Moshe Rabbein. That's one issue in this page. The other is that Pinchas is the opposition of Ratzi, of, of, of Nadav and Aviyu. What did Nadav and Aviyu do? They didn't want to live in this world. What was Pinchas doing? Sacrificing his life. That sounds the same to me. There's a fundamental distinction. None of the Navi were killed with a fire. They destroyed only their souls. The body remained whole. Remember that? Rashi says two fires went into their nostrils. Their mm. body survived. Why? Because they didn't serve Hashem with their body. They served Hashem only with the soul. So only the soul went up. The body stayed here. Continue. Right? Pincha sacrifice. Not only his soul, but his body. Shazel, we in Kiddush Hashem, which is a level of martyrdom called Kiddush Hashem, the sanctifying of God Almighty's name, she mitzvah gedele, which is the greatest mitzvah. 
Ubaze Heshev as Hamas and Abne Yisrael. Pinchas returned, he resolved the anger of the Abishtad, Behamasidas Nefesh Alay through his self sacrifice, okay? Because he sacrificed not only his soul, he sacrificed his body. To say it in different words, another view wanted to die. Pinchas wanted to live, and he gave away his life to become his Nikmas. Okay, so before we get back to Moshe, this Maimon is teaching us two things about the uniqueness of Pinchas. First of all, it's possible for a person to die al Kiddush Hashem, and it should be the optimum act of Shuv, not Ratzu. If you want to live and you give away your life nevertheless, because this is what needs to be done, that sacrificing of life is the epitome of bringing Hashem into this world. That's what Pinchas represents. As opposed to another of you. And it reminds me of an idea that the Rebbe once mentioned in Fabrengen. The Rebbe's father was Meis Nefesh HaKiddush Hashem. I don't have to tell you. I mean, he, he, he passed away after his exile, but he was Meis Nefesh for Yiddishkeit. No question about it. When the Rebbe became a Rebbe. The second year after the Rebbe became a Rebbe, Chof Ov was Shabbos. His father's Yatzat was Shabbos. You hear? In those days, the Rebbe was very particular about not speaking English Shabbos. Later on, the Rebbe became very comfortable speaking English Shabbos. But the Rebbe said a whole hadin of Sech, the Rosh Hashanah, that year, Toshin Yudbeis, a whole hadin of Sech, this was start to finish. But he spoke about the Beis Yosef. And he brought out that the Beis Yosef was supposed to die Kiddush Hashem. He was supposed to be given a maton to die Kiddush Hashem. That's what his maggot came and told him. Then he did something that according to the Madrega of Beis Yosef was not appropriate. You know this, right? Mm-hmm. The Rebbe said it many times. And he was punished that he's not going to pass away Al Kiddush Hashem. No, Beis Yosef is on it. No, the Beis Yosef, the Mechab of the Shechon Aram. So he never didn't die Kiddush Hashem. So what did he do instead? He lived to like 97 years old. Wrote the Kesef Mishnah, the complete commentary on Rambam. The base is a complete commentary on Tosh Shachonaruch, and then he wrote his own Shachonaruch. This was the punishment for not getting Kiddush Hashem. So the Rebbe says that means the Mesiras Nevesh, Kiddush Hashem, is greater than writing the Kesef Mishnah, the base Yosef, and the Shachonaruch. But wait, it's not a fair comparison. Why? Mesiras Nevesh is personal. The Svar that Beis Yosef wrote, called Beis Yisrael, Mission of Love, the whole Jewish world leaves on those books. Says the Rabbi, you have to say, therefore, that the Beis Yosef, Mr. Nevesh, Akil Hashem, had it occurred, would have benefited Klal Yisrael more than the Kesef Mishnah and the Beis Yosef and the Shulchan Aruch. When an individual Jew is Mesa Nevesh, Akil Hashem, the benefit for Yidin in this world exceeds the writing of the three most important Svar that we Jewish people have today. Why? Or when? If it's Mesir Saguf. You don't want to die. You want to live. You're giving your body away. Another one we have Mesir Saneshama. So they're both doing acts of Mesir Nefesh. One has zero to do with this world. And one has such a profound impact on the world. That it's greater than writing such importance for him. And of course the greatest goodness of this whole story is that uh, he didn't even die. <laughs> he lived. Mm-hmm. But the Indian was there. The Nekama, the, the act of jealousy on Pinchas' part created this unbelievably positive energy in the world. So this is the, the second point that ever raises, but the first point we're explaining. What does Hasidus have to say about Pinchas' unique role? This was Mesir Saguv, wasn't Mesir Saneshama. He's the opposite of Nathan He wanted to live. But this needed to be done and he did it and that was all he was unique about. Now that we finish with that, we go to the second issue, which the Rebbe raised first. What about Moshe Rabbeinu's Mesiris Nefesh? Right? The other Bafarshim, the Das Tevara, spoke about the comparison between Pinchas's Mesiris Nefesh and Arad's Mesiris Nefesh. The Maimed talks about Pinchas versus Moshe Rabbeinu, and he says the following. V'zehu shenemar bepinchas davke. V'zehu shenemar bepinchas davke. V'zehu shenemar bepinchas davke. Shaheshiv is Hamasi the game and he brought back Hashem's wrath, the Khain Def, what the Hine. Moshe Heshiv Kam upon him Khaim Ab Nayso, no question. Moshe Rabbein had brought back the anger against the Jewish people many times. Okay? Now, remember, what did the Eight Adas Taif say about Moshe? He didn't say such nice things about Moshe. What did he say? First of all he says, Vaidabir, Hashem was angry at Moshe. Why Taki didn't you do it? Second of all he says, You didn't run such great risks. The Maimah doesn't say that. The Maimah puts Moshe Rabbeinu on a pedestal. And of course Moshe Rabbeinu saved the Jewish people. But it wasn't a big deal for Moshe Rabbeinu. Why not? Because Moshe is Ma and Pinchas is Ban. What's the difference? Moshe is holiness. Pinchas is worldliness. 
measures holiness as it's brought into the world. Pinchas says, worldliness is it's halified, as it's made holy. Moshe's approach to this world was first God, then world. They call Avodas Hashem Moshe Rabbeinu all of us Shalom the whole life of Moshe Rabbeinu. Ho yibebechines mil mai lo lamata kenedus from the top down. Ve'alkein consequently ain zechidish kol kach it's not such a big deal. Shaidei am shachas ha'ed mil mai leheishav chemo you bring down Hashem's light into the world you take back anger. Avod bepinuchos ho yizeb derech mil mata lo mai le pinuchos was a part of the world. He was a, he was his his. He was Gashmi eccentric rather than Ruchni eccentric. And nevertheless, Vezehu Hapela, this is what's so amazing. Shayadeh Avedasi, even though he served Hashem from a perspective that the world was very real to him, Mepchinas Mulmata Lama from the bottom up, he lifted himself to such a level that Heshev Hamas, he brought back the anger of the Ebishter. Parenthesis, Vezehu Shakosav, which is why it says in Tilim that Vayam Pinchas, Pinchas got up. How did he repair the Sakona against the Jewish people via Falal? He prayed, not through Teda, but through Tvila. Had Hoyazai de Tvila, he did it through Davening. The difference between learning and Davening, learning is Moshe Rabbeinu from the top down, Davening is Pinchas al from the bottom up, through his Mesidus Nefesh. That's, this, this is enough of the mime for us to get the gist, the message. Pinchas is the opposite of Nadav and Aviyu, and Pinchas is the opposite of Meshad Abeinu. Okay, and I want you to know what it says in Hasidus. Yeah, Meshad Abeinu is a much higher level than Pinchas, right? Mm-hmm. And yet, Dafki al Navi, who was either the reincarnation of Pinchas, or actually the same man as Pinchas, Allah, Begufe, Besara, Hashemayim, his physical body went into heaven. Why? Because Meshad Abeinu's priority was his soul. Such a pure soul that halified his body. But the body's holiness came from the soul. Pinchas was a goof person. His avaidu was gashmias. And he elevated his goof so much that his goof person went straight into Gan Eden alive, physically. And for such a person, for a goof person, to have reached a level of Mesiras Nefesh, to, in other words, what he calls in the Maimir, prayer as opposed to studying Torah, to be jealous on the Abishta's behalf and bring back the Abishta's anger. This this is this is this is very very great, very very praiseworthy, and so forth and so on. Okay, and as the Chazal say, there's so much more here. There's two Maimorim, and then there's the Marash Maimes, and then there's the Sicha. And at the end of the Sicha, on page twenty-seven and twenty-eight, the Rebbe has several lessons that we could learn from this. Right, one of the lessons that Rebbe says, you see somebody doing something good. Don't criticize their motives. They were saying Pinchas is, is a cruel person. Don't criticize their motives. Another lesson that Abba says is that sometimes someone does something that looks like an act of cruelty and it's the greatest act of kindness. And somebody, sometimes a person does an act of kindness and it's the greatest act of cruelty. Zimri was being kind, he was being cruel. Pinchas being cruel and he was being kind. And on page 28, the Abba says the lesson for our times is that there's a fire burning and we've got to do what we can to save the spiritual plague and bring it back to the Abishtha.